Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today with a fun dyeing experiment. Today we are going to hand paint some, uh, some stroll fingering weight yarn, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, with some Wilton's icing colors. And I'm going to use toothpicks to apply rows of the dye directly from the jars onto the yarn. Now this yarn has been pre-soaked in water, but with no acid. And then after we've added some little stripes of color from these food coloring jars, we're gonna dip dye this yarn into a bath of citric acid and see how the color spread out and strike to the yarn. So I think it'll be really cool. The five colors that we have today are Wilton's Violet, Wilton's Teal, Delphinium Blue, Black, and Kelly Green. And so I don't go in and out of the container. You can see I just got a healthy toothpick full of the violet food coloring. And now I am painting this across the yarn. And you know it's pretty thick. You can see it's starting to spread out on that section. And I know that it won't go necessarily all the way through in that area, but it is what we've got. And since I have a little bit left on the toothpick, I will add some additional stripes up there. Before I'm making this up as I go along, I expect some of the food coloring to strike the yarn of a given color, um, but some of it will probably go into solution and spread out. Of course, we don't really know until we try it, so, we're sort of making this up as we go along. So we'll either end up with some like cool speckled yarn or, you know, we'll, it'll all go in and we'll get more of a pale color. I'm kind of digging the like stripes out of the color, these thinner stripes. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I'll need to rinse these off while I'm done. Well, let's do some black. Ooh, I'm running out. This experiment is really conducive to uh, jars that are almost empty of different colors. You see, where, especially where we have these lumps of color is sort of a great candidate for the color spreading out. <laughs> All right, that's three of the colors. I love how you can see over here the breaking already on the violet. I'll zoom in before we go and I broke my toothpick. Um, I'll zoom in before we go to dip dye this, but oh, you can see I'm starting to get some on my hands. All right, the delphinium one is not not the best. <laughs> okay. And now we have our Kelly Green which I think I'm actually going to place towards me. Got a nice healthy toothpick full of our Kelly Green. I'm actually going to put some of that. Oh dear. Down here, but it looks like my line is not uh, <laughs> being much of a line, but that is okay. So again, this yarn has no acid in it yet. So there's no reason why all of these colors would necessarily strike right away, but some might strike. But now that we're zoomed in a bit, you can see in the violet especially, and a bit in the delphinium blue, how the colors are starting to break. But now I am gonna start preparing the dye bath. This is an exhausted dye bath from a few other videos. 
We started off with eight cups of water and four packets of Kool-Aid. And so we have some citric acid in here and the water is reduced um, at this point because it's, some of it has been removed from other experiments. But this is the bath where I am going to dip our yarn that we painted directly from the Wilton's Vials. So we're gonna let this heat up and then we'll get started. We are just below a boil. And so I'm ready to start dip dyeing our yarn. But I wonder if you can see the back side does not have anywhere near as much color as the front. But I'm not going to worry about that. And look, we can see already the colors are starting to spread out. And I'm just kind of going slow and slowly adding more. It looks like that those pinks stayed. Ooh, this is cool. but our colors are slowly, slowly spreading out. And you can see what's in the bath itself is changing from this green to now deeper colors. And let's add the rest of our yarn. Sort of wiggle this up. Because we are, do have some pale color up here and some really deep colors on the other side. This is cool. You saw how quickly those pinks struck, right? That is awesome. I'm gonna reduce the heat, and I am gonna let this sit for, well, gee, okay, there's still some colors coming out, actually. Maybe, oh, very, very slight, very slight blue. Um, but I'm gonna let this sit for five minutes, and then we'll come back and check on it. It has been five minutes since we added all of our yarn. And I am curious about how much color, oh, look at those deep purples remain in the dye bath. Not very much, there's a hint of blue in there. But most of the color is in the yarn. Given that we added dye that was so concentrated onto this yarn. I'm gonna turn off the heat. I'm gonna let the yarn cool off in the pot for I think an additional 10 minutes. So as I said, there's no more heat in here, but I'm gonna give it 10 more minutes just sitting in the warm pot before we remove it. It has been 10 minutes, so I'm gonna remove the yarn and yeah, that water is clear. I could have left this in the pot to cool entirely, but to be honest, I want to be able to wash the pot. But here are some of the colors we got, and that's so, so cool. So I'm going to let this cool completely, and then we will wash the yarn and see if any other color comes out. It is now time to wash this beautiful multicolored yarn. I'm curious to see if any more color will come out of this yarn as we add it to the water or if everything sort of dissolves when it hits the dye pot. Now I've been asked before about how to prevent uh, say getting yarn bark which is another way of saying yarn that is hopelessly tangled and you'll notice that when I'm washing I sort of like to try to keep a hand inside of the skein so that way it helps kind of keep things orderly and prevent it from getting tangled. I technically should probably add some more ties to the yarn but uh, <laughs> so far so far so good um, when it comes to tangles and it's a little easier to sort of fix things when it's dry as well. But anyway I'm not seeing any color coming off right now it looks like the color is really in the yarn. And so now we can add some clear dish soap um, to just, you know, wash the fiber so we're not like just totally great Kool-Aid here. Um, but we will continue to rinse um, the fiber a bit and we'll rinse it a few times, maybe add soap one more time, and then we'll hang up our yarn to dry. The finished yarn is 
absolutely spectacular. There wasn't that much dye present, but as we dipped it into the pot, the dye dissolved into the pot and struck really closely um, in the area. So this is a dip dyed yarn, but we also got these kettle dyed, space dyed effects to it. And that is really fun. Some of the colors that had red number three in them struck really, really fast. So we have these specks of pink on the yarn. I think that if you wanted to end up with colors that were more fluid, we would probably want to stick with more colors that had, say, red 40 or just blues and yellows for our gradient. But look at how small that patch of green is. I mean, this is awesome. I know that people were really excited when I shared a sneak peek on Instagram and Facebook, and I felt bad that it would ha that they'd have to wait a few months for the video to come out. But I know that as soon as this comes out, I will probably want to do a live stream dedicated to this technique to really explore it further. I think that we might want to use a tool uh, like a fork or something that wouldn't splinter as opposed to the toothpicks I used in this experiment. And whatever we're dipping into the container, uh, we should save and dissolve the leftover dye and use that for a project as well. I think that this has so much potential and I'm really excited to take dip dyeing to this next level. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching this dyeing video. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you can be notified when I release a new episode of Dye Pot Weekly or do a live stream. Thanks so much for watching!